So I'll share with you what are some of the tricks I took uh, based on some of the ideas we shared on Monday as well, last Monday. And for this week, what are some of the things that I'm looking out for? Okay, uh, last week I mentioned that my focus for last week was purely on yen tests, right? So uh, most of my trade that I took actually is all related to yen or uh, New Zealand dollar. So this, these are the two currencies that I'm focusing on. So the first one I'm going to share with you is uh, Euro Yen. Right, uh, I didn't catch a lot on this. Uh, but basically, the reason why uh, we are shorting this, I think most of you will have known. Uh, last week, my buyers on the yen pairs are all looking for short opportunities, right? So euro yen, uh, this is where I shorted with the break, right? From this this whole pattern, the break here I entered. Uh, I actually shift my stop loss pretty quickly, so I didn't catch the entire move, but I entered here, All right? And then midweek, I share with you that this has an opportunity of scaling in. So this little small one you see over here is where I actually scaled in but uh, I quickly moved my stop loss to protect so that was a break even trade as well. Alright, uh, another one is of course uh, Pound Yen. Okay, so this one again, uh, very clear reason why we shorted this. So this one, this is where I shorted and then uh, this is where I got out with, uh, I, I shaved my stop loss as we moved down and then this is where I got out. Okay, uh, so, so later I'll share more about Euro Yen and Pound Yen for this week as well. Okay, so uh, to give you an idea, following up from what we shared last week, how is this going to happen? Okay, uh, another pair that uh, I actually took as in close the trade last week was New Zealand Yen. Uh, sorry, New Zealand Dollar. Uh, this one, I think many of you also know that uh, our bias is shorting New Zealand Dollar. Uh, the bias never changed up to today. I'll share with you more as well this pair. Uh, but basically this one is where I shorted, alright, uh, I share with you that when you see something like this, you want to be very cautious. Okay, I think all of you would know what this pattern looks like, right, it's actually crawling down. So if you are shorting it, means there's a high chance that this will eventually come back up. So that's the reason why I actually shifted my stop loss slightly below, alright, to cover the cost for my trading. Because if you are shorting Kiwi, you need to pay the swap. Okay, so this here is just basically covering my swap. So it's actually a break even trade up for this. Okay, Euro Kiwi. Uh, this is the one that I said there's a potential long-term trade, all right? But last week I shared with you that we are we are still potentially able to see one more dip before another make move up, right? And that's also the reason why I actually shift this stop loss pretty aggressively to the to, to protect my trade. So this one again is just a break-even trade because if you're buying Euro Kiwi, you are shorting the New Zealand. Okay, uh, there's swap involved. So this one here is just a break-even to cover my swap. Right, there are two trades that are still running. Okay, this one here is dollar yen. Already shifted stop loss to break even. Uh, this one here is again based on last week's idea. This trade was triggered on Friday. So this idea here was similar. I'm looking for selling the yen pass. All right, so this one is triggered using the catalyst on Friday is uh, your US core retail sales and core CPI. All right, so it came in pretty bad. Uh, that was this impulse move that I look at. Okay, as far as what market is doing right now, uh, it's still giving me the sign that we can still look for short opportunity, right? So this one here, uh, I will be looking for scale in opportunity going into this week. Okay, this is dollar yen. Uh, another one is euro pound. So uh, this one here, I'll share with you exactly why we shorted this. Uh, but basically, I shorted here uh, again, shifted stop loss to break even, looking for downside, right? So this one, I think Lester shared a little bit this week. He's also looking to sell the euro pound. For those who know how I trade it, usually when I look into the market, okay, the first thing I look into is not the chart straight away, right? But it's actually your events calendar to take note of what is gonna happen this week. So my way of doing that, how to focus on is look at events calendar. What are some of the major high impact news that's gonna happen for this week? I'm gonna use that to give me some information of what pairs to look out for because they are gonna provide what I call a catalyst to move the currency pair. Okay, because every time I trade, I want to enter a trade and then the price needs to go in my direction strongly. Then it makes it very easy to trade. What is going to push that price to move fast is actually your catalyst, which is your news, high impact news. Right? So if you look at this week, okay, you realize that the impact, high impact news mostly fall on your Asia Pacific currencies, Aussie, Kiwi and Japanese yen. Okay, so tomorrow, very early morning, you have New Zealand CPI. Hey, that's gonna that's gonna be a high impact one, followed by Australian Monetary Policy Meeting. This one I shared uh, is not as important as your RBA. Okay, so it might not impact a lot, but your New Zealand CPI might. Okay, follow that uh, you have pound CPI and uh, Kani is speaking. But you take note of the time. This one here might not be very impactful. Okay, so instead of focusing on this, I will look at Kiwi for tomorrow, or I will say this week. Right, Kiwi will be the key. 
Uh, Thursday will be Australia because we have unemployment data, okay? employment change and unemployment rate, followed by Thursday you have your pound, uh, sorry, your Japanese yen VOJ. Okay? Uh, and then of course Euro ECB is the focus this week as well. Okay, so you have Euro, you have Yen, you have Australia, you have New Zealand. Yeah, so these are the four four major currencies. Uh, other than that, nothing much, right? Uh, Canadian CPI and core reduces out. I just share with you that Canadian for me is a really done deal, meaning this year I'm only looking to buy cap, not looking to short cap. Okay, it's very clear already. For the remaining of 2017, it's only looking for opportunities to buy Canadian. Okay, so in, in that case, right, uh, this news, if it comes in bad for Canadian, uh, it gives us some form of correction, it will be a better opportunity to look to, to buy the Canadian. Okay, uh? So this way focus definitely is Euro, Yen, uh, Australia and New Zealand. Okay, So that's where uh, I'll start to go into the chart. All right? And uh, since Euro will be one of the key ones, right, we'll look at Euro Dollar. Okay. So my, my step process is always look at daily to give me at least a rough picture of what the currency pair is doing. Okay, uh, I mainly trade H4, but daily gives me some clue. Okay. So if you look at this, all right, so for those who never do homework, what is your bias? What is the recent move here? Impulse, right? Okay. So if your daily is impulse, every time at the end of an impulse, what do you do? You wait. You never trade at the end of it. Okay, so daily, you are, you are now at the end of the impulse, you go to 4 hour to look at, that means you zoom in, you want to look at what's happening at the end of this impulse, alright? So now, on H4, this move here is impulse, right? This one here? Crawl. Yes, right? So what it's doing right now is potentially forming a crawling up movement. When you see this, usually it forms... In technical pattern is usually what we call a wedge. Okay, so usually when you see this and you pull out a momentum indicator, it can be your RSI, can be your stochastic, right? You would see some form of divergence. Okay, which is what is forming right now. Okay. So what it literally means is that this move up is losing momentum. Meaning, at one point of time, there's no more momentum pushing it up. That's where you're going to see the reversal down. So your move, your, your, your uh, divergence is on the correction side? Yes. Yeah. Meaning, this entire crawling up, you will see lack of momentum. Okay. So if you put these two things together, it means technical and fundamental, which is your Euro ECB on Thursday. Right? So you have at least three more days for this entire move to continue crawling up. Okay. If it doesn't crawl up before ECB, means uh, you might not have a very good setup to take a sell. But if it continues crawling up like this, then we have a very good setup to trade the ECB break to the downside. Okay. So does it all does it mean that all the time it's gonna break down? Not necessarily. Okay. This kind of setup gives us a high accuracy, but it's not guaranteed. Meaning, don't go and sell all in into your trade. They still must have risk protection, SL and things like this. Okay, huh? okay, so this is Euro. So if you ask me what is my outlook for this week, is I will look for short opportunity. But I, am I going to short it now? No, not really. Okay, so how am I going to trade this? Wait for ECB news, trade that news. Meaning, if this continues to build up on Thursday before the ECB news, I'm just going to put a stop order. When the news comes out, it break. that's where I'm going to enter. Yeah, so that's Euro for, for me. Okay, uh, looking at Aussie and New Zealand. Okay, Aussie dollar and New Zealand is both very difficult to trade. Okay, uh, for those who have been following us in terms of Aussie idea, you know that Aussie has been just up and down every time we want to trade it. Okay, but with the recent move, okay, it becomes clearer because now you get, now looking at the chart, you have sign of where it wants to go. Okay, uh, if I bring you to daily, okay, look at this. What is your most recent move? This one here, very strong, is that yeah. impulse move. Okay. So at the end of an impulse, again, you don't want to enter a trade there. So you always want to wait for a correction. Okay, if we go to 4 hour, again, what you are seeing here is still an impulse move. Okay, so wait for a correction. 
So again, at the end of an impulse, market can always give you three kinds, three scenarios. One, reversal, means a sharp move down. Second is a slow move down, and then third is cr cr crawling it up. Okay? So only the second scenario, which is a slow correction down, give us a buy setup. Okay? So for Aussie dollar, this week news, most likely is, is probably either going to give us a reversal or a slow correction. This might happen. Okay, so in any way, this one here, no trade. Okay, so Aussie dollar, I'm, I'm not going to trade it. Okay, Kiwi dollar is the tough one. Okay, because uh, we are looking at short, alright, the reason why we are looking at short is this. Huh? This is an impulse move on daily. This is an impulse move on daily, but at the end of this portion, is giving us a slow correction up move. Okay, that's the reason why we are looking to short it. Okay. If I zoom in to H4 though, okay, you can see this entire move up here. That means starting from here all the way up to this part. There is a lot of overlapping, meaning price move up, come down, move up, come down, move up, come down, move up, come down. This is where it forms your slow correction up. Okay. At one point of time, this entire move here would lose momentum and you will see a down move. Okay. But how, how do you know that the down move has started and has confirmed that it has started? Okay. You need to look at this. Huh? Okay, so then the question is, can I use other pairs to trade the Kiwi? There are better pairs actually that you can look to trade the Kiwi dollar instead of uh, New, Zealand, uh, New Zealand dollar, right? Uh, that means this pair. Okay. The reason why it's difficult is because dollar itself is also weakening. Okay. That's the reason why New Zealand dollar is actually a bad trade. It's, it's very difficult for you to trade. Okay. But if you want to short New Zealand, there are better pairs that you can look for to short New Zealand against another clearer pair to trade against with. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly share with you what are the two pairs that you are uh, actually not two, three pairs that you can focus on for New Zealand short. Okay, the first one is look at pound kiwi. That means if you want to short New Zealand, short it against pound, meaning you buy pound short New Zealand. Okay, to so just focus on H4 or just by this portion. Okay, so quick one, you see this one here crawling down. Okay, you see a wedge. Okay, this is your first up move. Then what it's doing right now is sideways correction. So this sideways correction more or less confirm that this move here has reversed this portion. Okay, so every time you see, you can expect minimum three times. So you have one, two, you can expect one more. Okay, not all the time it's gonna give you, but high chances it's gonna give you that. So what you can do is you can look for buy opportunity to the upside. Okay. So for those who are more experienced, this pattern here potentially can give you one, two, three, and then we up. So you need to wait. Okay, this one here, if you if you forecast the pattern for me, it's most likely a flat pattern. Okay, meaning this correction might not have completed yet. Okay, unless the the, the unless price gives you a correction, a small correction here, then you have impulse correction that maybe will more up already. Okay, so whatever happens this week over here is important. Okay, but if you want to short the kiwi, pound kiwi is a better choice to look. Okay, very similar is your euro kiwi. Okay, so euro kiwi, as of what we see right now, okay, last week I shared this is an impulse. Okay, and I say this correction is a bit small. So we might see one, two, three. Okay, so right now it has formed one, two, three. The next thing is this down move is impulse, so you want to see what is going to form this week as well. Okay, if it gives you a correction, then you can expect one, two, three. Okay, if it forms a reversal, strong reversal up, then you know this whole part here, this correction is done. Then you want to look for a long term upside. Okay, Euro Kiwi, I'm not interested in shorting it. Okay, uh, again, recap this one. I'm no longer interested in shorting it because. Let it load a while. Okay, I'm looking at this. On a weekly perspective, I'm looking at this as one impulse. This whole portion here is a correction. 
this whole portion is a correction. This one here is where your wedge pattern is forming. This is a reversal. Okay. So what I'm expecting right now is this move here, this is a correction. I'm expecting one more all the way to the top. Right? So that's the reason why Euro Kiwi I'm only interested to look for buy side. Okay, meaning look for buy opportunity to go all the way up. Okay, so if I see a sell setup like this on Euro Kiwi, like on H4, huh? if I see a sell setup meaning impulse, a correction, I might not be interested to take the short side. But if it gives me that short side, I'll be looking whether I can buy at the lower price to buy all the way back up. Okay, so Euro Kiwi, my long term perspective, my this year buyers would only be looking for buy setup, not short. Okay, but the market can still give you short term sell. Okay, another one if you want to sell Kiwi is this pair called Aussie Kiwi. Okay, again this one here very clear. Aussie Kiwi, this entire move here is impulse. Right? Wait for a correction and then you can buy this up again. Okay, so if you want to sell Kiwi, you have three better opportunities to sell Kiwi than Kiwi dollar. Okay, because US dollar is weak. So you want to sell a weak currency against another weak currency is very difficult for you to trade. And also go for one that is stronger and then another one is weaker. Okay, yen. Alright, so we went through Euro, we went through Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, we look at yen right now. Uh, okay. Leicester has uh, fundamental bias of yen weakening. Okay, but for me, looking at dollar yen right now, uh, I'm still more towards looking to sell the dollar yen, meaning I'm expecting yen to be stronger than the dollar itself. Okay? The reason is H4, this is an impulse, this is a correction, this is an impulse. Right now what it's forming it still seems like a correction. Okay? If it continues to form a correction like this, I'll be looking for another trade down one more time. Okay? So that is where I, I have one position here already. I can look to scale in again if this gives me a correction. Yeah. So for dollar yen, this is my perspective on H4. Right? I'll show you what I'm looking at on daily. Okay, this is impulse. Huh? Right now this entire portion is correction. Okay. But correction comes in three. So you have one, two, three. This one here is another correction of one, two, three. So if you see three, three, you can lump three into one group. So this is one, two, three as one group. Then this is one, two, three as one group. So you have one, two, potentially one more down. Okay. So what is going to happen? What is going to push this down? Uh, right now, it's still not clear. But it might come from weakness of dollar. It might come from strength of Japanese yen. Or it might come from uh, risk of environment. Okay, so when the market is uncertain, it's, it's in a risk of environment, uh, your safe haven like Japanese yen will strengthen and then it will push this down. Okay, so as of now, this little small portion here shows that it's strong move down. A correction up like this, a slow correction up, will confirm that we can see more downside. Okay, so with this entire opportunity, that's why I want to look for skill in. Okay, so this is the bigger picture of what I'm looking at on dollar yen. Okay, uh, looking at euro yen, so combining the yen and the euro this week. Hey, okay, daily, where are we now? What move? What's the most recent move? All right, because impulse, correction, impulse. Okay, so this is on daily. So what you need to wait for right now is just correction. Okay, we don't, we will never trade at the top of an impulse move because it's the most, I would say, most uneasy trade for you to take because whatever scenario is going to give you is very difficult for the trade. You give you a first scenario which reverse, you get stop out. If this your correction down, you get a drawdown. If it gives you a correction up. One day you see profit, next day you see loss. One day you see profit, next day you see loss. It's very difficult psychologically for you to trade. Okay, so in any case, after the end of impulse, we don't trade it. All right, so Euro Yen for me this week is no trade. Okay, but if you want to take short term, okay, meaning short term trade out, this year is a very strong move down. Okay, right now we might see a correction. We might see one more short term down. Okay, when I mean short term means if you are able to protect your trade, shift your stop loss, you do that. Okay, because there's a possibility that this down move can quickly end and then it starts to go up again. 
Okay, so if you are trading this to the downside this week because it's an impulse, if you see a correction, you short this, make it a short term trade. Protect the trade if, if you can, if you're given the opportunity. Huh? Okay, combining Aussie, Aussie Yen and Kiwi Yen. Again, this one very clear cut. It's an impulse move at the end of it. Wait for more information. Okay, so usually when I see this kind, it's just no trade because we need more information. So this week is the week that we're gonna wait. Okay, for Aussie Yen. That's the week we are gonna wait. Okay, Kiwi Yen. Okay, Kiwi Yen is something that uh, you might consider looking at it as well for this week. Okay, if I show you on daily. Okay. This is an impulse up, okay, but if I zoom in to H4 later, you can see that this portion here is lacking momentum to go higher. Okay, so this is daily is an impulse, huh? I go to H4 now. Okay, look at this, this entire portion. Okay, we have a divergence forming already. Okay, so this whole portion here on H4 is showing that it's slowly lacking momentum. Right. What it means in lacking momentum is not to short straight away, but it's showing you sign that a short setup might be forming. Okay. So I today I walk you through in terms of this kind of scenario, two things you can look for. One is if it gives you a wedge, it becomes very clear. It's a short setup. If it doesn't give you a wedge but it continues to just crawl up like this, you want to wait for the confirmation which is over here. Okay, so there are two ways to engage this kind of pattern. Okay. So again, Kiwi Yen might not be the best pair for you to look for trade setup this week. 